Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, August the 25th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. For premium content, uh, Dwyer70905.substack.com. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Just a couple of points before I get into the Jake Paul fight. Uh, it's breaking news here that Manny Pacquiao was thinking about returning to the ring. Let me just say good for him. Um, folks, he still has a hand speed advantage on most of the people in boxing. Right? One of the problems he had with Ugas was a style matchup. Ugas is excellent defensively. Ugas was ready for him in the pocket, I believe, against other guys at 147, including some of these so-called elite fighters, right? Manny would have a lot more success. That hand speed advantage would be amazing. Keep in mind, too, Pacquiao, if he can force the other fighter to come looking for him, Right? If he can avoid getting hit in the body as much as Ugas hit him in the body, then I don't think you're going to see Manny get as tested as he was by Ugas. Put another way, my advice to Manny Pacquiao is, hey, player, come back. But not against this opponent. Right? Not against Ugas. Let's talk about another thing real quick for gamblers. Look, I, I love the Yankees. I was raised a Yankee fan, right? I remember when Ed Figueroa was the ace of the team years ago in the 70s, right? I went to high school in the Bronx. I'm fading the Yankees. You know, I'm all for hedging plays and things like that, but they're better teams in the American League. I know the Yankees are on a big run. I know that run involves a lot of home runs. Giancarlo Stanton, right? Aaron Judge. They look tremendous right now. And, of course, the pitching has rounded into form. But they're not the team, for example, that the Astros are. Right? I think we're all getting excited. I'll also agree that the Boston Red Sox don't look like they're going to do much the rest of the year. Right? Even if they get in the playoffs, I believe they're also flawed. But my advice to gamblers is don't get too excited. I know a lot of people are flocking to the Yankees right now, my advice is to take your foot off the gas. Right? Let's see how this plays out. Every team looks great when they're on a winning streak. I don't think the Yankees can match some of the other teams in the American League. We'll talk about that in other videos. Let's talk about these fighters. Tyron Woodley. Right? I see a lot of people here are giving him a chance. Folks, he's 39 years old. 39. He's new to boxing. He ends his MMA career with four straight losses. Four straight losses. He hasn't had a KO. We're talking about a knockout, not a submission. In MMA since July of 2016. Now I've gone over some of his films. Look, he has some great KOs, right? The Jay Heron fight. He has a jumping right hand KO. Um, the Josh Kustek fight. He throws a really good counter right hand. Okay, great. But what I want people to consider is the fact that the problem child, that's what he calls himself, Jake Paul, is a problem right not just for Woodley guys new to the sport but for possibly some ranked contenders folks you know Paul has been taken for granted to the point where Anderson Gibb showed a complete disrespect for him crashed the pocket was up in his face right Paul is forced onto his back foot. 
in that match. Hyper aggressive opponent. Folks, Paul shows you two handed power. He gets knockdowns in that fight with both hands. He can shorten his punches. Right? The Nate Robinson fight. You know, Nate again shows a complete disrespect for Jake Paul is crashing the pocket. I guess that's what we should expect because after all, Jake Paul is fighting guys with little fighting history, right? Professional fighters have more common sense than to just assume they could walk through you. Well, the bottom line is in that fight, the Nate Robinson fight, and I have highlights in my favorites folder, you're going to notice a couple of things. Again, Jake Paul is forced onto his back foot. And he still has power. Folks, that Jake Paul looping right hand that we know he can throw in a collapsed pocket where his opponent is just rushing in is devastating. Let me also say, too, the Nate Robinson fight. Look at the first knockdown. You know, the amount of time that Nate Robinson is given to recover would make even Gene Tunney blush. Right? Robinson gets off the canvas. He has his hand in the back of his head. Uh, folks, it's a legal punch. He's hit on the side of the head. Not only that... He's the guy moving forward. When Jake Paul throws the punch, the referee and him then have a discussion. I'm wondering whether the two guys realized that a fight was going on. The discussion took so long. Nate Robinson was given ample opportunity to recover. Too much opportunity to recover. Folks, he's blown out. Does not last much longer. The last knockdown... Nate Robinson is out on his way to the canvas. Now I know Woodley has a reputation as a puncher. Right, okay, great. That Josh Kustek fight, I encourage everyone to look at that fight. But my goodness, are you sure, watching this video, that number one, he can deal with a collapsed pocket? Right, that if... Jake Paul decides to collapse the pocket like Eason Gibb did the first fight against Paul or like Nate Robinson did the second fight against Paul. Are you sure Woodley's going to know what to do? After all, he's an MMA guy, folks. He's not a boxer. If you have uncertainty on whether Woodley can handle a collapsed pocket, by itself, that uncertainty, since you don't have that uncertainty with Jake Paul, should have you favoring Jake Paul. Let me say this too. Are you sure that Woodley is two-handed? We know Jake Paul is. Again, look at his first fight. Folks, he's throwing punches with both hands. Right? Don't get fooled by the public persona. We've had a lot of fighters come up and they're playing the class clown and everyone's laughing and you're wondering whether the guy's taking it seriously. Jorge Pius, if you remember him, a fighter from a few years ago. Right? You're laughing with him. You're saying, oh gee, this guy couldn't be serious. And then of course you notice in the ring the guy has skills. The Ben Askren fight is interesting, right? Because in that fight, Paul has an opponent who, unlike the first two, is actually on his back foot. Folks, I know we remember that fight as a quickie, but there's actual engagement before Askren gets KO'd by, guess what? A Jake Paul right hand. A punch that might be an A-plus punch. Right? Hard to tell after three fights against 
will charitably say inexperienced opposition, right? Okay, hard to tell, but let's just say, my goodness, Askren's hurt by that punch. More importantly, you'll notice Askren is playing a cat and mouse game. He's backing up a little bit. Jake Paul comes forward. Paul's on his front foot. That's the end of that fight. So we know far more about Paul than we know about Woodley. Right? We know Paul can operate on his back foot. We know Paul has power. We know Paul is two-handed. We know Paul is a KO puncher as a boxer. We know Paul can come on his front foot. Think about how hurt Askren is. Askren gets off the canvas. He doesn't want to be counted out. Then he has a conversation with the ref. I'm guessing the ref said, how you doing? And Askren said, oh, look, 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 look. the ref waves off the fight. In other words, guys fighting Jake Paul, folks, they're badly hurt. Nate Robinson's not awake at the end of that fight. Askren's awake, but the referee was unimpressed by the conversation at the end of that fight. So to me, the bet I like here is the favorite. It's expensive. It's a minus 200 on Jake Paul to win. Let's do the math. They're telling you that Jake Paul wins two out of three matches against Woodley. You have to ask yourself whether Woodley even deserves that much consideration. 39, his first fight as a boxer against a guy with three stoppages. He lost his last four in MMA. You're looking at film, you have to think to yourself, isn't there a difference between the kind of jumping right hand that Woodley throws against Jay Heron and being able to throw heavy right hands with a collapsed pocket or heavy right hands in a tight space. Right? We don't know what Woodley's going to do if he's cornered up against the ropes by a hard-hitting guy like Jake Paul. Right Again, don't confuse Paul's class clown routine outside the ring with the guy in the ring. It doesn't take much to realize this guy has skills. Let me also say, too, in terms of mental toughness, Right? Everyone's a tough guy outside the ring. Right? I'm not saying an experienced MMA guy like Tyron Woodley is suddenly going to get in a boxing ring and, you know, wet himself. I'm not saying that at all. But what we do know is that Jake Paul, with hyper-aggressive opponents, look at his first two fights, right? with hyper-aggressive opponents, keeps his cool. Right? Nate Robinson is literally up on him. Nate's pushing the fight on him. This is not a bigger man leaning all over a smaller man and grappling with him. No, this is different. This is the opponent running in, forcing the action, coming up on Jake Paul's chest. Robinson ends up knocked down multiple times. Are you sure that Tyron Woodley, in that situation, would have that level of timing, as well as that level of calmness. I like Jake Paul in this one. I think he's underrated. I think it's interesting that we know nothing about Tyron Woodley in a boxing ring, but yet, People are giving Woodley, and I know he was a great welterweight in MMA, right? But folks are giving Woodley a 33% chance. I think we know that if a boxing match breaks out, we know Paul has boxing skills. If this goes to decision, which I think is extremely unlikely, 
we know Woodley has no chance of winning. Right, no chance of winning. Nothing I saw, and I looked at a few of his MMA fights, nothing I saw suggested that this guy whose background coming up is as a wrestler. Right, not just pro, but when he was in the amateurs. Woodley's a wrestler. In other words, this isn't that ringer who you start to look at the thing and you realize, oh, this guy used to box. Right, wrestling's one thing he's done, right? Keep in mind, Fiddley Klitschko, for example, was a kickboxer for a period. Right, so you kind of like look in the resume and you say, oh, wow, you know, this guy was in the other sport. No, nothing like that on Woodley's record that I saw. If you know differently, please tell us about it in the comment section of this video. I think this is a boxer against a non-boxer. I think Jake Paul and his team are highly technical. I think the guy's right hand, the one that he drops Nate Robinson with multiple times, is lethal. Right? I think the guy's coordination is such that he can set his feet even as he's backing up, which a lot of fighters can't do. I think Paul also has more skills than he's been able to show, right? Because it's hard to show a lot of skills when you have a guy like Ben Askren falling to the canvas in the first round, right? This might be an advanced fighter, in against a newbie. I'm expecting the favorite here to win the fight. I'll be surprised if he doesn't win it by stoppage. But I'm not going to just bet Jake Paul by stoppage. I'm just taking Jake Paul to win the fight. I did notice on the props that casinos will make it hard for you to make a profit with a hedge, right? It's very hard to say, okay, I'll take Jake Paul at minus 200 and I'll take Woodley by stoppage, right? Let me say too that I did notice that Jake Paul carries that left a little bit low and that, you know, Woodley's best punch is probably that right hook up top. Maybe, maybe Woodley can time it and land hard on Jake Paul, right? We really don't know how Jake Paul's chin is. Okay, fine. But I think a far more likely scenario is that Jake Paul comes out, keeps this guy outside with the jab. I think Woodley's big idea is going to be the same idea Nate Robinson had, right? The uh, first and Eason Gibb opponent had. It's going to be the bum rush Jake Paul, right? Opponents don't respect Jake Paul. Folks, that plays into Jake Paul's hands because he is skilled. So, I think Woodley's going to try to crash the pocket. I think Jake Paul's going to say to himself, oh, here's another guy trying to crash the pocket on me. Right? Here's a check left hook or, worse yet, here's my big A grade looping right hand on the side of your head, right? I'm expecting a stoppage. I'll be more conservative. I'm just taking Jake Paul to win the fight at minus 200. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.